Father, dear Sunday, and we are in His presence, enjoying fellowship with one another. Hallelujah. We are still in the year of our Lord, 2023, and this is the month of April. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, can I hear you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Abba. Once again, LibertyHouseUSA.org or go to our YouTube channel. Please type in our full name, Liberty House International Church, and then can treat yourself to the videos that we have there online. So you can enrich your spiritual life and become that influence and impact the lives the way God has ordained you to be. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation. And my delivery is unique, so if I say something that does not resonate with you, please don't pick up a fight with me. Let us not quarrel. I'm for you and not against you. My mission here is to push you forward, to help you advance in your walk with the Lord, and to what? Promote 
and advance the kingdom agenda, kingdom of God agenda. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, with that said and that out of the way now, we can proceed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you stretch for your hands towards me? Did you do that? Oh, okay. Now I see it. Okay, that's fine. Hallelujah. Okay, so we are going to go to Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. I'm on a, on, a, on a journey. The Lord has put me on a journey handling some of these things. And I don't know how uh, soon or how long it's going to take. So you are going to bear with me. Hallelujah. Amen. And some of the things that you are going to hear may be a repetition. I'm saying in my delivery. No matter. It's going to be a repetition or something new. An addition to what you have heard already. Because you are working on something. The revelation of God is progressive. And you can know it just one day. And at times you even say something, you think that they have said it, they should get it, they still don't have it. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's read together. Uh, we are reading Colossians chapter 1 uh, from verse 12 uh, to the 13th verse. And we are reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Shall we read? Giving thanks to the Father who has... I'm reading alone. Don't do that. We have guests. Don't do that. Turn to somebody, tell the person, go back. Take your reading voice. Okay, let's read now. Read. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Oh, something came to mind. Now we apologize to our viewers, those who have uh, watched uh, Friday, just this past Friday. That was what, 20, 21st. The broadcast. We had some technical challenges, so the picture of the video didn't turn out well. Uh, doing the message was great. Hallelujah. Yes. So we apologize for that. We are still working on this uh, technical technology, you know. Yes. So please just bear with us. But you know what? I think this is the time to do it. Some of you, you've been watching us. You've not even said a comment, negative or positive. But especially to you, those who have been blessed by this broadcast, this ministry. Why don't you say, okay? Say a word, send an email, say something to encourage us. Whether you say it or not, we know we are going to stick to this. Trust me. But it's good for you to say it because that is your responsibility. And also to partner with us. You send money to some ministries or somewhere that you have no business doing. Send us some money so we can improve upon what we are doing. We can get a better kind of equipment in terms of camera, in terms of our lighting, and what have you, to, to deliver well. Hallelujah. Because I know some of you, you don't like what you see. Me, myself, I'm not all that there. I'm not fully impressed by, you know, our picture or our video. We can do better. But it takes money. God has blessed you to be a blessing. So if God lays it on your heart to send some donation. Offering my way, do it. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, so that's just by the way. Okay. Um, probably somebody forgot about the word we read, so I'm going to read it again because of this commission. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So we are already qualified. He's not now going to qualify us. So I want us to know if you are born again, God is our Father. Amen. And that's why I started with that song, Abba, Father. We receive the spirit of adoption according to the book of Romans and Galatians. So we are jointed with Jesus Christ. All right? We are children of God. As many as receive him, he gave them the power or the right to become children of God according to John chapter 1, verse 12. So we are children of God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All right. So if we are, then he has qualified us. He is not now going to qualify us. That is why we have to be careful about our self-effort. Creating our own works. We have to remember what qualified us or what brought about the qualification. It's not because of our good works. It's not because of our self-righteousness. It's because Jesus Christ shed his blood. Can you say amen to that? Amen. He laid down his life and he pleased the Father. And then we, by faith, had to believe that. We have to receive that. We have to accept that. And then we became one. Born again or children of God. Amen. Because Romans uh, 10, 9 and 10 says, 
If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto what? Righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Why am I reading these things? It takes only conviction. It takes only persuasion of truth. What God has said, like these two verses I gave, John 3, 16, Romans uh, 10, uh, what, uh, 9 and 10. Conviction, persuasion, belief, acceptance of that. And one becomes what? Born again. The verses we read, there was nothing about offering. There was nothing about two hours, one hour, four hours of prayer before you become born again. There was nothing about fasting. There was nothing about consecrating your soul. There's nothing about stop your this and stop that. And if you see, nothing like that. If you agree with me, say amen. Amen. Okay. Do you really agree with that? Amen. Okay. Bible says it. I didn't say that. Okay. Why am I laying emphasis on this? Because we read all these things. Then we go to our local assemblies. And we have some spiritual leaders that tell us that even though Jesus laid down his life, and this is how we came into sonship, we came into adoption, God adopted us. We didn't pay him any money. Do you get it? We didn't pay him any money. He didn't say you have to jump up and down three times. You know, you have to run to here, run to there, and then no. It was simple. For by grace, and we say through what? Faith. That is Ephesians 2.8. And now it says, it's not of our own works, lest somebody should boast. That's right. So that's how simple it is. And we have to accept it. Now, everything and anything that takes place in the kingdom of God, it takes place this same way. Grace, faith, grace, faith, grace, faith. When we talk about grace, we are talking about God, Jesus Christ. When we talk about faith, we are talking about our responsibility. What we have to do. Remember, the just shall live by his faith. The Bible says it over and over. We are in a different covenant. It's not based on the law. Amen. Where God says, do this, do that. If you obey this law, if you obey this commandment, and if you do this, then, then this is what I'm going to do. But we are in a covenant. We are under a system or in a system where God has done what he has done. And then he's inviting us, come, partake of it. That's it. Like, when he first created Adam and Eve, he created everything that man would ever need. And then when he finished, he put them in the garden. That is what? Grace. He has already provided. He has already made us what he needs to make us or what we need to be. He's made us. So we evolve into what he has already what? made us. That's our life. And today I want to talk to you about the life of a Christian. The life of a Christian. And you are going to understand where I'm coming from. So you are already, say I'm a partaker, I'm a partaker. Of, the of the inheritance of the saints in the, in the light. Let's read on 13 now. 13 says, let's read together. Read. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. And conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Okay, so let's take it from the back. Where are we now as, a, as children of God? Where are we? Where? According to this scripture, where are we? Where were we in the first place? In darkness. I can't believe looking at you, you were in darkness. You were? Wow. So we were in darkness. But he delivered us from the power of darkness. He's conveyed, he's transferred, he's translated us to his own kingdom Amen. where he is Lord. Amen. And I'm going to drop this. I want him to get it well. Another wisdom, nugget of truth. Where we are now, it is Jesus that serves as a reminder for anything God has to do with us. I'm going to say that again. This covenant, where we are, this kingdom, the system, new system, is Jesus who serves as the guarantor, the guarantee, and the reminder concerning everything that God has to do with us. It's not like the law. 
that are giving you my commandments. And if you hear diligently and you carefully obey these things, then this is what I'm going to do. Jesus became the atonement. He met the requirements. He fulfilled the law. And God was pleased. The Father was pleased with that. What did we do? We came in by what? Faith. We accepted it. Hallelujah. Amen. We came in by what? Faith. So I want you to note the word delivered. He's not now going to deliver us. He's delivered us. He paid the ransom. He bought us. He took us from that place. That place was what? Darkness. Can you say darkness? darkness. And where did he take us? Into his kingdom. So we've changed what? Kingdoms. Can I say I have changed kingdoms? That's why I want to talk to you about the life of the Christian. The life of the Christian. Your life is different now. You are in a different kingdom. The laws, if I should put it that way, the constitution of that kingdom, the policies of that kingdom, the bylaws of that kingdom is different. The environment is different. The culture is different. Customs different. Traditions different. Very different from where we used to be under the power of darkness, the dominion of sin, and the domain where Satan was the boss. He's no longer my boss. Darkness has no power over me anymore. Sin does not have power over me anymore. That's why Romans 6, listen to Friday's message. Uh, sin does not have power over you. Let no sin have rule or rule over you, reign over you. Why? Because it doesn't have power Amen. over you. Amen. So you see this? We are going to move on to something else. So the other kingdom, God was trying to do something. He tried so hard, but it didn't work. And that's why Jesus, the Son himself, had to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Because nobody could fulfill the law. So the life of a child of God has nothing to do with the law. I'm going to say that again. The life of a Christian has nothing to do with the law. Ten commandments and the whole nine acts. Saying that, not to confuse people, let's go to uh, Romans chapter 6. Let's take it from the 13th verse. And then I'll, I'll move. I don't have much time. I think I, I'll do this. If I'm preaching a bit, that's it because I don't have time. And do not present your members as one instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as what? Come on, church, talk to me. Present yourselves to God as what? Being alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of what? Righteousness to God. Okay, let's continue. For sin shall not have what? I said it from the beginning. Now you have a chapter and a verse to back what I said. Sin shall not have what? Dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. You are not, sin does not have dominion over you because you are not under darkness. When we talk about sin, we are talking about darkness. Don't forget. Wow. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. You know that scripture? Yeah. I'm going to give you that scripture. But let's finish with this. For sin shall not have dominion over you. We can read it this way. The devil shall not, never, ever have dominion over you. So if the, the, the devil himself and his whole kingdom no dominion over you, then it means that no demon, no devil, no small, small, whatever, whatever spirits should have what? Evil spirits should have what? Dominion over you. They should not even come close to the life of a believer. Nothing they should do should ever work. But is that what we see in the believer's life? Some believers, they will say, No, I'm an attack. You know, uh, the, the devil did this, and the devil did that. Why? It's due to ignorance. That's why I teach the way I teach. Because some people, they don't know that they even have dominion, authority over the devil. They don't even know that the devil doesn't have authority over them anymore. They don't. You see, they are not in his kingdom. You are in God's kingdom. Amen. The kingdom of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. 
If the devil couldn't stop Jesus to rise up from the grave, what makes you think he can stop him now? There's power in your life that you have been underrated or you are taking for granted. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same power that God used to create the heavens and the earth. That same power, and I have to add, it's that same power that keeps the waters, the ocean, from running us over and drowning all of us. That same power. It's the same power that keeps the animal kingdom going. It's the same power that a man and a woman, husband and wife, can come together and procreate, have children. That same power. It's that same power that protects you. Because of what? The blood that Jesus Christ shed. Do people know that? Some don't. So they say, well, I have to pray so God will protect me. No, God knows his job. Tell the tell the person God knows his job. I mean, he's been doing this for years, since Adam. And now you have to say, God, I'm asking you to protect me. He's not a forgetful father. Oh, somebody said, you know, we have to re- remind God. Because the Bible says, and, and God remembered this. And God, like, you know, in Exodus. And God remembered the children of uh, Israel in the land of Egypt. That was a different system. That was a different covenant. Now, Jesus stands. He uh-huh. sits by the right hand. He's not this time. He's seated. Yes. Uh-huh. And he sees his work. Yes. It's a constant reminder Amen. to the Father. Yes. What is already done? Yes. What is already what? Yes. Accomplished. Yes. Yes. He doesn't need any reminder anymore. Hallelujah. He wants us to know his word. Hallelujah. Take his word. Yes. Act on it. Yes. Do his word. Yes. Say his word. Yes. Take his word. Yes. That's it. That's right. So if you don't know his word, then, even though you're a believer, like somebody said, the abundance of water, the food is still thirsty. We have all this protection, the blood of Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ, the power of God, the, the, the angels protecting us. And yes, so, go to some places now and you see believers, they are praying for protection. The beginning of every year, New Year's Eve service, they are going to pray. That I'm, the, the, the spiritual leader will say, I'm going to anoint everybody. This anointing is going to keep you. It's going to preserve you throughout this year. Then when the year is over, they have to come again to be anointed. You see how it works? And I always say that me as a pastor, I've not even done that before. I don't do it. You thank God for the protection. He's already doing it. He's already doing it. So you thank him. Be grateful. Be grateful. Be grateful. And stop asking him to do something he has already done. But because we don't know our word, we don't know what he's done. Yeah. See, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, we have not received the spirit of the world. You see, but we have received the spirit of God. So we know the things that freely have been given to us. Yeah. We have the spirit of God, and yet we don't know. Wow, why, 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 why? Because we are busy about some other things. If you ask, if you ask the average believer, no, don't get me wrong. There go some days that I don't open the Bible. If I don't open it, that doesn't mean that I'm not meditating on some word. I'm still in the zone. You know? But the average believer will tell you that reading the word of God is a challenge. <laughs> Can I have an amen? <laughs> you know, it's a challenge. Am I right? So if you don't know it, then you can't believe it. If you don't know it, you can't have it. That's what it is. And when you didn't know it, you have to take it. But you have to be taught how to take it. I remember when we were giving you promises many years ago. <laughs> you think that you being what? Pastor, so you know. You know nobody knows it all. We are all working progress. Then it said, God is going to change. Uh, your what? Address will change. Then one particular promise said, I don't know what you are driving. There was nothing wrong with my car. Now. Then I was driving a Honda Accord. There was nothing wrong with that. This happened in, uh, well, uh, before the year, is it 2000, before 2002? Before the 2000s, yeah. Or whatever. I said, but what I'm driving is all right. So why is it, what is this? 
it is in my mind how oh, this kind of uh, thing about materialism and the thinking about you see because I had wrong information. I was raised up to think and to fast and to pray that God will give us wisdom like Solomon. You know, to be able to do what he has called us to do. That was wrong teaching. You see, Solomon asked because that was different. But in this time, Christ has been made wisdom to us. According to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 30, he's been made wisdom to us. We have the wisdom of God by way of the Holy Spirit within us. It's the spirit of wisdom. So we have it. So no believer should be praying for wisdom. He should be thanking God for what? Wisdom. And one of the ways that this wisdom comes forth or can be inspirational is by you studying the word of God, especially the teachings of Jesus Christ. People don't have time to do that. And unfortunately, we sit in places where the so-called spiritual leader or what, minister of the, they call themselves minister of the gospel, but they are not preaching any gospel. They are preaching law. And that puts people into bondage. Hallelujah. Oh, the guy put it there. Let's read it. But of him you are all in Christ Jesus, who became for us what? Wisdom from God. You see, when you know this, look, I used to I used to be where some people, some of you are. I didn't know that too, because I was taught the wrong things. So I was always, my prayer line was full of asking God. Today I ask God for something, tomorrow too, then something comes out I have to ask him for. And I always ask him, ask him. And uh, what we thank God, we only thank him that, oh, you have answered my prayer. Thank you for answering my prayer. But we don't thank him for things that we know we have received already. Amen. Ignorance. Ignorance. And I see people pray. I try, I've seen this in a lot of places. And I'm believing God that it will change. They pray for their pastor and they pray things like, God, we're asking you to cover our pastor. No, he's been covering him all these years before you began to pray. He's been covering him. Thank him for covering your pastor, your spiritual leader. Don't go and pray, God, I'm asking you. Do you think God doesn't know how to do his job? That's how simple it is. Well, well, before we jump, we jump here. So we are not under grace. Now, we are not under law, but under grace. Now look at Second uh, Second Corinthians chapter 3. Let's start from verse 6. Let me try and somehow bring this to a landing. We were in darkness, under darkness, but it took us from darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, um, Who also made us sufficient as ministers of what? Come on. Did I write the Bible? Ministers of what? What is the new covenant? New Testament. What is the new covenant? We are talking about the system that Jesus Christ, through his death, resurrection, and his ascension, and sitting on the right hand of God, brought about. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Come on now. Amen. I'll say that again. I want to hear the sounding, you know, amen. I said, when we talk about the new covenant, we are talking about the provision of God, the abundance of God that he has already released. That is why now somebody can say, I believe in Jesus, and then we come born again. Why? Because Jesus has died already. He's not going to die again for anybody who wants to become born again today. That blood still has power to save unto what? Eternity. Yeah. And it can cover millions and billions. Yeah. And anytime somebody releases their faith, their confidence in what he has done, that person becomes the child of God. Yeah. That's the power, the saving power, delivering power Hallelujah. in the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And yet Christians don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> They, 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 they are, uh, what do you call it? Expression of unbelief. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood is already working. Thank God for the blood. Don't be pleading it. You see, we relate to God and handle his stuff like the thing is somewhere. Like the way we are here is somewhere in another location. We have to order it and bring it in. 
So you say, I'm breathing the blood of Jesus Christ. No. None of the disciples, the followers of Jesus Christ, prayed that way. So where did we get it from? Think about it. Where did we get it from? Somebody told a lie. And now everybody's doing it. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to say something to you that will shock you. Actually, now some people still, they have not transitioned. Get me, don't get me wrong. They use the name Jehovah. Instead of using Jesus, they both stands with what? J. In the Aramaic or Hebrew, the J is Y. It's not pronounced the way we pronounce it. Yahweh. Or Yehovah. Let's put it that way. But you see, they haven't shifted from the kingdom. Even though God has done it, they are still, their mindset is still over there. I think the name Jehovah, Jehovah is something like it. It's not about what you like. It's about what he's instructing you to do. And what pleases him. Why? Because in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, it says, let this mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. Who was even God, but he thought it not robbery. He humbled himself, even to the point of death. Because of what he has done, God has given him a name. That is above every name. You see? We are talking about the name of God. We are not putting down that name. But it's God that released that name. But it's the same God that changed that name to Jesus. Do you know what I'm saying? The names of God gave us a glimpse of who God is. But with the coming of Jesus Christ, we have now come to know no glimpses. But we have come to know who God is. Because Jesus said to Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. He's the express image of the Father. And it's that name that is given to men that we can be saved. No any other name than the name Jesus. In his name we can pray to God and receive answers. You see what we do at times? How many people we'll pray and pray in the name of Jehovah have prayed? See, we are confusing and mixing things up. You have to stick yes. to the new. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's so much confusion. Now look at us. We like to impress people. Show. Sure. When we pray, even, we are praying to God and we forget that God knows our heart. We are trying to show off before people in our prayers. At the mention of that name, let's start it from verse 9. At the mention of that name, every name will bow. Things under heaven. Let's read together. Read. We are in Philippians 2 9. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. What? And given him a name which is above every name. That's God who is doing that himself. Why do we wrestle against him? Like he said, okay, I'm into the law. The law he gave it to the people of Israel, the Jews. Then he said, No, now I'm not going to deal with just the people of Israel, the Jews. I'm going to deal with the whole world. Amen. That is why Jesus had to die for the whole world. Amen. So I can adapt people, children from all over the world, other nations, yeah. not just one nation anymore. He changed that. And how come we don't get it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Move with God. Amen. You see, when you go to when you go back home today. I want you to take a good look. Don't wear shoes. Don't wear sandals. Don't wear anything on your feet. Don't even wear socks. Let it be bare. Like the way you came from your mother's womb. Take a good look at your feet. I'm going to tell you why. Take a very good look at your feet. And you realize that your toes are not behind your heels. Because life must flow. And it's a forward flow. Life goes forward. So we move forward. We can have challenges. Things can come against us. But still we have to continue to move. The revelation of God flows. It's progressive. A little here, a little there. A precept upon precept. A line upon line. That's the revelation of God. And you need somebody who has a knowledgeable working experience with God to be sharing things like this with you. Yeah. To shift you 
from the way you think. Renew your mind like Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 says. Now what? Present yourselves to God. That's what your reasonable, rational service. Present yourself. Then it says, and re be renewed. Because it says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, you can say what you want to say about me, but I don't care. Some of the things that happen, TV land, I don't know. The latest movie, I don't know. Because that will not give me life. I'm not saying don't have entertainment. You know? But to me, it doesn't give me life. So I go first for life. Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness. Yes. That's where I stand. Yes. Any other thing secondary? Mm. Hallelujah. Yes. So it says that at the name of Jesus, everyone needs to bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. Amen. Look at this. Look at this soul. The name is above everything you can think about. Yes. The name of any sickness the name of any situation, the name of any disease, infirmity, whatever. Amen. The name is about that. Amen. So when we go using the name Jehovah, 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 God is saying, that's me, that's me. But that's not what I told you to do. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. He's, not, he's not obligated. He's not bound himself to that. He's bound to this name. He said, this is what I have given you. Amen. Now let's read on. Verse what? 11? Still in second and... The second chapter of Philippians 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God Amen. the Father. Hallelujah. Do you get it? Yeah. When you read Colossians, when you read this same book, Philippians, it will tell you Jesus Christ is above every rule, every authority, dominion, principality, power. It's Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus. It is Jesus. That's what God has done. He's changed. Hallelujah. Just like he changed from the law to grace. He changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And he took us of the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Let's finish the second Corinthians. Wow. The second Corinthians we read only six. Let's go to verse seven. Second Corinthians 37. Let's read together. Read. But in the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones. Wait, wait a minute. What, what ministry was that? Yeah. It was death. Okay. Written where? Engraved on what? what? What was that? The law. The law. Ten commandments. You see, this is God's word. We are not trying to create something else. All right? Was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses. If somebody was confused, then it can't be confused anymore. Because if you know your Bible, you know that it was Moses when he received the Ten Commandments coming down the people. His face, the glory of God was upon him, and he couldn't look at him. Yeah. But you see, that is small, 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 small glory compared to the glory that Jesus Christ brings to the table. And you have to know that it was God's glory, and he put a beat on Moses. But when we talk about a new covenant, we're talking about Jesus Christ, God himself. The source of glory. Hallelujah. The glory itself. Why would, I, why, would I, why would I leave the, the, the source, the glory himself, and go for a peace, small portion? Why wouldn't I follow Jesus Christ, who is God, and then go follow Moses? Who did he even make it to the promised land? He was depending on Jesus' life to lead him. So if Jesus is here, don't I have to follow Jesus? Amen. Amen. They couldn't look at him. Which glory was what? Passing away. Mm -hmm. 9 chapter 9. Verse 9. There's still a second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For if the ministry of condemnation have glory, what we read about? The old covenant, the old testament. Had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more of glory. Not my words. Not my words. And the Bible says that anything that the law says, it says to those who are under the law. 
But it took me from that place of law. From darkness. That's why in John 6, 63, Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit in your life. Now, quickly, let's look at Second, First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2, verse 8. Let's read together. No. Is it verse? No, I'm sorry. Nine. I'm sorry, nine. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Are you ready to read? Yes. Okay. Let's read together. Read. For you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praise of him who called you out of where? Darkness. Into where? His marvelous light. Hallelujah. This is not glorious. You see, Bible interpreting itself. We were in darkness, he called us out of darkness. And now he's in marvelous light. You don't have anything to do with darkness. So we have to walk as children of light. According to uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, we have to walk as children of light. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all righteousness. That's first uh, John chapter 1, verse 7. And then look at first John. No, I'm not finished with this, but someone read this because I want to deal with this. So we read the first first uh, John chapter two five. If I'm not mistaken, it says God is light; in Him is no darkness. Mm. Anybody there? Come on, come on, hurry up, please. God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. We are looking at two things: darkness. We are looking at light. Amen. The life of a Christian is a life of light. It's not a life of darkness. It's not a life of law because we are not under the law. We are not under the Ten Commandments and the other ceremonial symbol, Caesar and Sister, Caesar and Thirteen Kind of Law. We are not under that. Amen. And uh, some of the churches, what they are teaching us is wrong. I'm part of the church. I'm not coming against the church. I'm not condemning the church. I'm condemning the wrong teaching in the church. And Bible wants us to do that. Have you found it? First John, oh, who's, so who's my help? First John 2, nine, two, two 5. First John, you said first John. 2, two five. 5, yeah. But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is per perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. So, okay, check one 5. I'm sorry, check one 5. It's on 7. It's rather 7. Yeah. Thank you, because I, I remember when we use this scripture, I remember what it did for you. You love it. So it's rather 2, 7. It's 2, 7. How did I say 5? So, brethren, all right? No new commandment. No commandment. But, an old commandment. but in all commandments, which you, have had from the which you have heard from the beginning, the old commandment, the old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. It's the word which you heard from the beginning. It's not that. What are you guys doing to me now? <laughs> are you reading something different? It's John. Yeah. John. Two seven or what? One, One seven. seven. Okay. What are you guys doing? First John 1 7. Come on. I may not have the chapter and the verse right, but I know it's the word of God. Yeah, I read. If we say if we say that we have fellowship with that we have fellowship with what? With him. With him. And walk in darkness. And walk in darkness. We lie. We lie. And do not practice the truth. Oh. So where is that God? I said God is light. In him is no darkness. At all. First, God. What are you? John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in light, uh -huh. he is in the light. We no. That is not what I'm looking for. Uh, if we walk in, Google it. And God is uh, what? Light in him is no darkness at all. Please Google that. This is the book of John. First John. It's 5. First John 5. Yeah. Now read it now. Let me see. First John chapter 1, 5. Yeah, read it. Let's see. This is the message which we have heard uh -huh. from him mm -hmm. and declared to you. This is the message we heard from the beginning and declared to you. Uh -huh. that, that God is light. God is light. And in, him in him is no darkness at all. What, 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 what happened to you people? Uh, what happened? You were talking about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much, there's so much in here. 
But I said, God is light in him is no darkness at all. Yeah. A lot of things that I said. I have to know your Bible. Stop there now. So God is light in him is no darkness at all. Where do we find that? First John chapter 1, verse 5. Next, when we meet, uh, what? Sunday, I'm going to ask you that uh, scripture. So we've been called. Hallelujah. You know, out of darkness. Darkness there uh, means obscurity. Shakiness. You know, nice darkness. Like uh, of ignorance, respecting divine things and human what, duties. And accompanying ungodliness and immorality together with their consequent misery in hell. Persons in whom darkness becomes visible and holds sway. So we're talking about anything that is not Jesus. So I'll swing by this because my time is up. And next week, if the Lord allows me, I'm going to continue this. In the, uh, what? Ephesians 5 11, it says we are to have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. But rather, we should do what? Please put that up. So we should rather do what? Expose them. So when I teach you, that's what I'm doing. I'm exposing the teachings in the church. Some people may mean well, but they are injurious, erroneous, and somebody has to talk about it. That's it. Do you have it there? Come on, put it there. For Ephesians 5.11. Now I'm not taking your time, the computer. And have no fellowship what? Unfruitful works of what? Darkness. But what? Rather exclusive. I can take you to Jude and tell you how we have to contend for the faith. Romans talk about that. Expose those who cause division in the Bible and whatever. I mean, and the body of Christ. But I'm closing with this. John 8.12. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in what? Darkness. But will have the light of life. Amen. If you go following Moses' teachings, and not Jesus Christ, God himself, his teachings, the one who died for you, the one who took you from the kingdom of darkness. Because the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 4, in him was life, and the life is the light of man. He is the light. Whoever follows him will, will know what? Walk in darkness. We'll have the light of life. The light of life. There's no life in the law. All life, the source of life, is Jesus Christ. Do you get it? That's why I encourage people, if you read the Bible, good, read. Don't go and read stories about David. And then apply it to your life. So God, you know now, uh, I was created in uh, in sin did my mother conceive me. And I was shaping in iniquity. If you are born again, that doesn't apply to you. Amen. Because the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you. Amen. I couldn't read that. And then you read things like, oh Lord, my enemies are coming after me, I'm helpless. God, go after my enemies. You read that from David. And so you too, then you, no, read the New Testament. Where your will is where what God has done for you is, what God has given to you is, where God wants you to know what he wants you to do is, Amen. we do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know many people are teaching what I'm teaching. You, if you like, I'll give you permission. We'll do it one after the other. You know, not, a, a not everybody going out on a particular Sunday. But with the first volunteer, that you want to visit the church. Based on what you've been hearing in this house, I'll give you permission. Let me know. Don't go. Let me know. Tell them the church you are going to. We'll record it here. We'll give you a pass. Go visit them. Then when you come back, especially listen to their sermon, the way they sing, songs that they sing, it will tell you so much about how people are still in the old. They are nowhere close to the new. They are still married to the Lord. What we are supposed to be married to. That is why I always close our broadcast by saying, Stand firm! Galatians 5 1. And then verse 30. Stand firm in the liberty where we, Jesus Christ, has given to us. And do not again be entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love serve one another. He delivered us from this ignorance, the law. And I always like to use Paul. Saul, who was ardent 
and a student follower of the law. There's no pastor on earth that can compete with Paul and Saul who became Paul. The way he followed the law. The Pharisee of Pharisees. The Hebrew of Hebrews. But when he saw Jesus Christ, he changed. And he stopped following the law. He shifted into the new system. The kingdom of God. Why are some pastors and some local assemblies still struggling? Because in our ministry, it's no longer about people, it's no longer about the souls, the destiny, or the final destination of souls is about money. And some of the things that they are preaching sells and traps people, keeps them in their seats so they can milk them. And they create dependence on themselves. That is one of the reasons. But here we are not going to do that. Will teach the truth. Yes. Even there's only one soul standing, we'll still teach it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when you teach this way, you lose some. Mm -hmm. But that they didn't call me, and that doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say what you want me to say, what you like me to say. I'll tell you what God wants you to hear. Amen. That is it for today. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for tuning in. Hallelujah. Amen.